Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the end of trading day, 18th July 2017, with it being a Tuesday. Okay, so let's look at the actual stats for the day. First of all, Asian markets overnight certainly uh, open up mix, where the Shanghai eventually, uh, well, initially it was certainly down, but towards the close it certainly finished higher, up 11 points, up 0.3%. Especially after Monday's uh, uh, absolute uh, uh, hammering or hemorrhaging down uh, almost 10% uh, on certain uh, uh, particular stocks, which obviously uh, was known as Black Monday uh, and certainly was uh, under pressure, mainly due to the concerns regarding the Chinese liquidity and regulations going forward, uh, given the fact that uh, GDP economic data is in line and obviously they are trying to uh, certainly take out the uh, stimulus and the Kool Aid. Okay, so markets, as we all know, equity markets certainly are very um, uh, responsive to uh, stimulus, whether it be QE or fiscal, and uh, it certainly seems like monetary policy at present certainly seems to be dictating the direction of equity markets. You take away the Kool-Aid, the markets drop. Okay, so European session today, uh, DAX really is the biggest faller, down almost 200 points today, down 1.5% on the back of a stronger euro. Same with the French CAC, down 60 points, uh, down 1.15%. FTSE MIB under immense pressure and the IBEX as well. So it certainly seems like the market is preparing it for a potentially hawkish drug, especially given the fact that the euro is moving higher now. The only situation, well, the only uh, argument against the euro moving higher or the euro moving higher being uh, an interpretation or front running of Mr. Draghi being hawkish is the fact that you have QE, uh, you have the fact that you have the US dollar certainly being overtly bearish now. You had the uh, tax. Or well, the healthcare bill certainly uh, uh, certainly uh, defeated or negated altogether overnight, and that sent the dollar lower. You all, you've also had weaker you know, data out today as well: housing data and inflation data, or import prices, and export prices, import prices and export prices as well. So again, uh, certainly not helping the dollar at all, and which in turn obviously has led the euro to hit a pivot high of 1.1590, if I'm correct. Uh, 1.1584 is the pivot high thus far. Okay, so even take out pivot R3 resistance. So severely overextended on the euro. Certainly needs a pullback here on the daily chart. You can see that we're certainly hitting that key resistance at the 1.1585. And then you have resistance at 1.1615. And then resistance at 1.717. So it certainly seems like the markets are interpreting a hawkish draggy, which really is quite confusing given the fact that uh, so the ECB members certainly have backtracked and reversed on that idea. So either way, the market is what it is. We have to uh, adjust and react accordingly, okay? Also, sterling as well, certainly falling back on the back of weaker inflation numbers, hit a pivot high 1.13120, and then obviously reverse. So that certainly is something to take into account as well. Okay, let's move on to economic news in terms of the markets. Now that we looked at the stats and the reasons why the market has moved, Okay, so overnight, uh, really, it's uh, the uh, Kiwi uh, certainly was sent lower on the back of weaker inflation readings. RBA meeting was certainly hawkish, and that sent the Aussie higher. Okay, uh, UK inflation data certainly was the one that was in focus. German ZEW data certainly came in on the weaker side, even though that obviously has failed to send the uh, the actual euro lower. If anything, it went in the opposite direction. Okay, and then obviously we've had UK data ever since. Mr. Carney really was a no-show, no no real talk on monetary policy at all. And it certainly seems that the FTSE was certainly focused on weaker inflation readings. So let's see how the market unfolds in the US session for now. Okay, so let's look at the German DAX. Look at the German DAX and the actual uh, hemorrhaging on the DAX today. It's one hell of a sell-off, okay? So certainly retraced up to that 50% and then gave it all away, which was quite confusing, really, given the fact that... Uh, Obviously, we've had quite an, a significant rally in the German DAX up to 12.6780, and then certainly gave all that back in almost a day or two. Okay, 60-minute chart on the German DAX. Let's look here. So we have a gap fill closed now. So we're certainly looking for a bounce here at 12.390 in the German DAX, given the fact that we've closed that gap. Okay, so certainly overextended on the downside from my perspective, especially given the fact that the euro now is coming into resistance. So we should get some support here. Certainly looking for a bounce back up to 12.500 on the German DAX, looking for a rally here now. And looking for the bulls certainly to get back on board. In terms of the uh, French CAC, let's bring up the French CAC here. Certainly, uh, French CAC hammered today as well. Certainly under immense pressure. Didn't close the gap at uh, the 12, 5140. Certainly not expecting that gap to be closed. Okay, definitely not expecting that gap to be closed. Certainly looking for a pop here on the uh, on the French CAC now. Looking for a pop, given the fact that we are into that fib 75% as well. So bear that in mind. 
looking for a pop higher up to the three five two fifty zone. That's the zone that we'll be looking at five two fifty uh, on a move higher on the uh, the actual uh, French CAC. Okay, so that's my interpretation. Uh, daily chart on the French CAC at the moment certainly pulling back from that key resistance. But from my perspective, uh, technically, it's still uh, certainly bullish given the fact that we are now looking for labor reforms, etc. Having said that, there is a unfilled gap at 5140. We may well be targeting that. We did have a rally in the morning up to gap fill, and then ever since then, we've just been selling off. Uh, certainly overextended from my interpretation. Certainly looking for a pullback up to at least 5200, potentially back up to that 5230 zone again. Okay, uh, given the fact that uh, overtly uh, nothing really major, uh, majorly bearish except the uh, obviously uh, uh, inflation uh, euro certainly pushing higher. Given the fact that we have the FTSE 100 certainly uh, rallying off that pivot low at 5750 after weaker inflation numbers, weaker inflation data really is in control here from my interpretation. Weaker inflation uh, forces Mr. Carney to be dovish, and uh, a dovish Carney certainly is bullish for the market. You can see in the daily chart we have a bull flag, certainly expecting that to play out. 60 minute chart has an inverted head and shoulders with a target of 7600, certainly expecting that to play out as well. So we've certainly carved out the right shoulder on the back of weaker inflation numbers. Okay, so I think that's a, a wrap, folks, in terms of the um, European indices. Uh, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly tend. Uh, certainly download the uh, latest uh, app, Trade Signal, Signals and Market Updates from leading providers at Google Play and the Apple App Store uh, on your phone. Goodbye now.